As the voice of wrestling, the legendary Jim Ross has had countless iconic calls down the years. You're probably replaying them in your head right now. And that's no surprise given how good old JR provided the lyrics to some of the sport's greatest moments. And throughout his illustrious career, he's had his fair share of go-to lines and catchphrases, most of which fans still remember and recite to this day. So for this video, we're counting down the top 10 Jim Ross one-liners. First to some honorable mentions, JR's unique vocabulary gave us some classic one-liners. For example, a wrestler jogging or getting away at a pace that was anything faster than walking usually resulted in JR saying that they were running, running like, like a, a scalded dog. dog. It's up. He's trying to run like a little scalded dog here. When a match would get truly physical, he would describe it as bowling shoe ugly. Got a bowling shoe ugly. This is a bowling shoe ugly match. This match has those uh, bowling shoe tendencies. It's somewhat ugly. <laughs> and when things got hardcore, he would scream. Look at the carnage. Look at the carnage. And describe a superstar as being broken in half. Cactus. Yeah. But sometimes the action would be a bit too much for him to take, which led to him shouting, Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Let's have some battle! Oh. That's enough. No! Oh, God, that's enough! Stop it! And somebody stopped the damn match. For the love of God, somebody stop this! Somebody stop the damn match! Enough's enough! He even tried to get over some unexpected catchphrases, such as, Who is your daddy? Nevertheless, his passion always shined through and made him a joy to listen to. But now, on to the main list. Number 10, Jezebel. She's beautiful, all right, for a Jezebel. For what? When JR called the girl a Jezebel, then you knew she was in trouble. She's a Jezebel with two tongues. What exactly is a Jezebel? An evil woman. That, or she was a conniving heel that constantly did things Jim didn't like or agree with. That Jezebel has no right to be in a ring. But once they eventually got their consequence, JR would feel vindicated. With Stephanie McMahon and Tori being on the receiving end of this insult the most. And there's Tori, that Jezebel. I didn't say she wasn't beautiful. I didn't say she wasn't sexy. She's a Jezebel. And that Jezebel running for her, her proverbial skin. Number nine, tougher than a $2 steak. Range is the classic tougher than a $2 steak, let me tell you. One of JR's most self-explanatory descriptions would be when a wrestler was said to be tougher than a $2 steak. Man, listen, Barrett's tougher than a $2 steak. That's an image which is easy to imagine. Plus the line itself has that signature JR charm. He's tougher than a $2 steak, no doubt about it. Tougher than a $2 steak is shameless. Oh. While also making for a funny t-shirt. What is concerning though is that the fact that $2 steaks, or better yet even $1 steaks, actually exist. Tougher than a $2 steak. How much, how much is a food dollar steak anyway? Buck 99. <laughs> Number eight, government mule. Shawn Michaels getting whipped like a government mule. Being whipped like a government mule was JR's way of saying someone was getting their ass kicked. He just whipped their Shawn's ass like a government mule. You're a damn fool. The king beats you like a government mule. Usually the wrestler in question would be taking a one-sided beating. This is without question one of Jim's most used and therefore most quotable lines. However, the backstory of the phrase is actually quite interesting, as slaves who were freed would be promised 40 acres of land and a mule. Although, the quality of the land would typically be quite poor, and the slaves would take out their frustration on the mule that the government had also provided them. Now we're all getting whipped now like that government mule we talked about. How many mules does the government own? Number seven, don't do it. JR was such a good announcer that he could make a relatively simple line mean so much. There's people in there! And this would be the case anytime he said, don't do it. Please, Matt, don't do it! Don't, don't do it! Figure your family, Matt! No, 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 no
This resonated with the viewers since we as fans would usually be thinking the same thing. No, for God's sake, don't get out! Oh, the, of God! the rest of us, however, pretty much never took Jim's advice. Don't do that! Don't do it, damn it! Just don't do it! Reach in your heart, don't do it! My God, he did it! Instead, opting to go through with the spot, but that's what made the line more impactful, as it could lead to a greater punchline, and that's one of the things that makes JR such a good commentator. because even his setup lines were so effective. John, don't do this, John! The God Almighty! No! No! Number six, business is about to pick up. I like when Jim Ross says business. Business is about to pick up here! If JR proclaimed that business is about to pick up, then you knew that big things were about to go down. I think business may be picking up for The Undertaker. And business is damn sure about to pick up. This line alone would be enough for fans to get hyped about what was to come. It became so iconic that it could easily add to a match or enhance the segment. Our business is about to pick up here. And this is one of the reasons Jim Ross is thought of so highly, as his commentary helped memorable moments become unforgettable. Say it, Jared. Business is about to pick up. Well, King, I think business is about to pick up. There we go. Business just picked up. Jared doesn't work here anymore. Number five. Slobberknocker. 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 Once business had eventually picked up, it usually meant we had a slobberknocker on our hands. This is gonna be a slobberknocker. It's gonna be a slobberknocker to say the very least. The slobberknocker of the year, King. A slobberknocker proved to be the perfect description for a big match that was to come or for a great match that had just taken place. Back in Oklahoma, Bobby, we call a match like this a slobberknocker. A slobberknocker? That's right. Because it's going to be physical, smash mouth wrestling. That is a definitive slobber knocker. Well, that's a damn slobber knocker, isn't it, JR? Number four, God Almighty. The God Almighty. He got the God. He did. The God Almighty. Whenever JR said the phrase God Almighty, you knew we had just witnessed something epic or shocking. Jim didn't just take the Lord's name in vain, but in true JR fashion, he added a little southern sizzle with his signature Oklahoma accent. Number three, Stone Cold. One of JR's all-time favorite superstars is, of course, Stone Cold. And due to his popularity during the Attitude Era, JR wouldn't hold back, no matter if he was introducing the man. There he is! There's Stone Cold! And the deal is Stone Cold! Oh, he's talking! He's talking! Or if he had just won a match. Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Santino Marella even remarked that JR's reaction to Stone Cold was as if he was having an orgasm. JR! not going to reach the point of orgasm. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you be the judge of that. Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Here is the winner! Stone Cold! Stone Cold is here! The Texas Rattlesnake is my king! Stone Cold! All right there! Stone Cold! Okay, okay! Austin is the champion! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Number two, son of a bitch. The son of a bitch! JR would get angry at the heels fairly often, but when he would say son of a bitch, then you knew he was absolutely fuming. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! I don't believe this! Usually this would be aimed at Vince McMahon. He is still one sick, perverse son of a bitch. Or Triple H. I am reality! He's a son of a bitch if you ask me. Hey, hey, hey. And because fans trusted Ross so much, if he was angry, then we would be too. Eric Bischoff is a no good, lousy son of a hey, bitch. Hey, hey, hey! So whenever JR uttered the word son of a bitch, it really helped put heat on the heels while also selling the severity of the situation. Tuxlin the son of a bitch all the way to hell! Come on, here. Son of a bitch! Come on, you son of a bitch! It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! What? You son of a bitch, don't What's you hear doing? me? Son of a bitch! Do you have no soul, you son of a bitch? Do you realize what you've just done? Why, Triple H? You son of a bitch! Why? Tell me why! Number one, 
by God. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! One of JR's most classic catchphrases was always going to include the man upstairs. Unlike God Almighty, JR would use this phrase more frequently. And almost anyone doing a Jim Ross impression will be sure to utter a bad God or two. It's also plastered all over some of WWE's most iconic moments. JR's one-liners will go down in history, and the moments where he provided his most iconic commentary will live forever. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like this video, be sure to check out our video on top 10 greatest mic workers in WWE history. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.